The idea of connecting the brain to a computer is not really that crazy anymore, thanks in large part to countless movies and TV shows. Depicting brain-computer interface technology through things like brain implants, mind-reading headsets, and of course, cyborgs. But before we explore the history of brain-computer interfaces in movies and TV shows, what is a brain-computer interface exactly? Well, simply put, a brain-computer interface, or BCI for short, allows the direct communication between a brain and a computer. See, in the brain, brain cells or neurons communicate through electrical signals. BCIs can modulate and or record these signals. If recorded, signals are processed and translated into commands that can be used to control a computer or even other devices. Brain-computer interfaces can be invasive, meaning placed directly into the brain, or non-invasive, usually placed on the scalp. Invasive BCIs are more precise, but they carry greater risks because, well, you're sticking something into the brain. Non-invasive BCIs, on the other hand, don't stick anything into the brain, but can be less reliable because you're measuring brain activity through the skull and other tissue. Now, you can't talk about brain-computer interfaces in movies without mentioning The Matrix. Released in 1999, this franchise introduced many to the concept of a simulation controlled by a sentient AI. Through the use of brain-computer interfaces, characters in The Matrix are able to fully immerse themselves in a virtual world and perform superhuman feats like speed-learning kung fu. It also established Keanu Reeves as a cyberpunk movie star, following his role in the 1995 Johnny Mnemonic, another movie about brain-computer interfaces, where he plays a character with a brain implant that allows him to store and transfer data. But the origin of the idea of melding mind with machine goes back further than movies like The Matrix and is really more steampunk than cyberpunk. One of the earliest examples of a brain-computer interface can be found in the short story The Ableist Man in the World, published in 1879. That's like almost 150 years ago now, if I did my math right. The story centers around a character who gains incredible intelligence thanks to a mechanical clockwork brain implanted by a Swiss doctor, naturally. For some real-life science context, a pivotal neuroscience finding that electrical activity exists in the brain was only discovered a few years earlier in 1875. And in 1924, the electroencephalogram, or EEG, was invented. EEGs measure electrical activity in the brain through the skull and have been instrumental in advancing research in the field of BCIs. One of the earliest examples of a brain-computer interface in movies can be seen in the 1936 film The Man Who Changed His Mind. The film tells the story of a mad scientist who develops a machine that can transfer a mind into another body. Featuring an albeit very clunky brain-computer interface, the mind-transferring idea was way ahead of its time, foreshadowing the plot of several future sci-fi movies like the 2014 movie Transcendence and the 2015 movie Selfless. Despite breakthroughs in brain research in the early 1900s, it wasn't until the 1950s that the field of neuroscience began to take off. This decade also saw a new subgenre of sci-fi movies that featured evil disembodied brains, such as Donovan's brain and the brain from planet Eris, which aren't really about brain-computer interfaces per se, but do reflect society's fears about scientific advancements at the time. One of the earliest examples of a brain-computer interface on television is in the 1956 episode of the show Science Fiction Theater. Great name, by the way. In the episode The Mind Machine, a computerized device called the Mind Writer translates brain waves into written text on a typewriter. About 30 years later, the Mind Writer would kind of become a reality. In 1988, researchers were actually able to use EEG signals to create a system that allowed people to spell out words on a computer screen. 
effectively only using their brain waves to communicate. Research on BCIs for communication is still going strong today, with the primary aim of restoring communication to people who have lost the ability to move or speak. In the 1960s, researchers began experimenting with implanting electrodes directly into the brains of animals. For example, neuroscientist Jose Delgado's research involved using electrical stimulation to control the movements of animals and even humans. He allegedly experimented with a radio-controlled live bull that could be stopped in its tracks by an electrode implanted in the bull's brain. Of course, Delgado's research was highly controversial and received a lot of criticism. But it's worth noting that research like this highlighted the need for a new field that could address the ethical implications of neurotechnology like brain-computer interfaces. This field, now known as neuroethics, has become a very important area of research today. Pop culture continued to show brain-computer interfaces in increasingly imaginative ways in the 1960s. A 1966 episode of Star Trek called The Menagerie featured a wheelchair operated through the use of brainwaves alone. This depiction of a brain-controlled device was way ahead of its time, and in real life, an early example of a BCI wheelchair controlled using EEG signals was developed in 2009 and continues to be an area of active research and development. Star Trek has since portrayed numerous brain-computer interfaces in its countless episodes, some more outlandish than others. It wasn't until the early 1970s that Dr. Jacques Vidal, probably the first to use the term brain-computer interface, formally described the idea of using brain signals to control machines. Vidal's early experiments used EEG brainwave data to control a simple computer game. He published several papers outlining his vision for BCIs, proving that brains and computers can talk to each other through electrical signals. The 1970s also saw the release of The Terminal Man. No, no, no. Not that Tom Hanks movie where he lives at the airport. This movie's based on a novel by Michael Crichton, who's also the mind behind some other sci-fi greats like Westworld and Jurassic Park. The movie follows a computer scientist who fears machines will take over the world. Nevertheless, he undergoes surgery to implant electrodes in his brain to help control his violent behavior caused by a previous head injury. But the electrodes have unintended consequences, and instead of subduing the protagonist, they actually stimulate his brain in ways to cause him to act even more violent. The more recent 2018 movie, Upgrade, takes inspiration from The Terminal Man, with the main character, also a bit of a technophobe, receiving a brain chip that allows him to regain movement after he becomes paralyzed. But the chip's advanced technology begins to take over, granting him extraordinary physical abilities, but also causing him to act extra violent. It turns out there's a real life technology called deep brain stimulation that works in a similar way to the implant in the terminal man. Deep brain stimulation uses an implant that's kind of like a pacemaker for your brain, delivering electrical stimulation to certain areas to help treat neurological conditions. The first one was implanted in a Parkinson's patient in 1987, and it significantly reduced their symptoms. But some psychological side effects have also been reported with deep brain stimulation, like negative changes in mood and behavior. Granted, mood and behavioral changes can be part of the natural progression of certain neurological conditions, though the effectiveness of deep brain stimulation is still a bit inconclusive. Nevertheless, it's currently undergoing clinical trials for the treatment of OCD and depression. Another film ahead of its time is Brainstorm, released in 1983, which features a brain-computer interface that can record thoughts and memories and even share them with others. This thought-sharing idea has been explored in several other movies since, like Strange Days from 1995. The movie showcases a device that lets users record their life experiences, which then can be replayed from a fully immersive first-person perspective. The plot centers around a conspiracy involving an extremely disturbing use of such recordings, 
so viewers beware. The 2004 movie The Final Cut with the late Robin Williams also explores a similar device that can record people's entire lives, allowing their life memories to be played back at their funerals. Now, if you're a fan of the show Black Mirror, you may notice some similarities with the 2011 episode The Entire History of You, where people have a chip implanted behind their ear that records everything they see and hear allowing them to relive their memories in vivid detail. Black Mirror delves further into brain-computer interfaces in episodes like White Christmas and Crocodile, leaving us with a lot of BCI-Fi to ponder. You might be thinking, there can't possibly be any real science that relates back to these thought-recording BCI movies. Well, there is actually some science that could explain how this technology might work in the future. In 2018, researchers from Kyoto University showed they can recreate images based on data from human brain activity alone. In their study, participants were shown various images while in an MRI scanner, and the activity in their brains was recorded. The brain activity data was then used to train an AI to generate new images based on the patterns it learned from the participants' brain scans, effectively recreating the images the participants had originally viewed. The recreated images are by no means high quality, not yet at least, but they eerily resemble the original images. While this research doesn't technically involve the development of a thought recording BCI, it does show that it's possible to recreate what people see just using data from their brain scans. Now, we can't forget a classic from 1987, RoboCop. Although the 2014 reboot is a different story. RoboCop follows a cyborg police officer with a human brain that interfaces with the body of a robot. The 1996 anime movie, Ghost in the Shell, shares a lot of similarities with RoboCop, including a kind of forgettable 2017 remake. Ghost in the Shell also features a government agent with a human brain encased in a fully robotic body. There's also Surrogates from 2009, which explores a world where humans control their robotic clones through the use of a brain-computer interface. And the 2013 blockbusters Elysium and Pacific Rim also explore the idea of connecting the brain to robotic bodies. While science has come a long way since 1987 in researching BCIs for controlling prosthetic limbs, we're not yet at RoboCop levels. But in 2008, researchers created a primitive robotic arm which could be controlled by the minds of macaque monkeys through an array of electrodes implanted in the motor cortex of their brains. Since then, the technology has improved, and in a recent 2022 study, a partially paralyzed man controlled two robotic limbs with his mind again through electrodes implanted in the sensory motor regions of his brain. While brain-controlled artificial limbs are very cool, they're still not widely available yet. However, brain-robot interfaces, or neurorobotics, is an area of active research and sounds super sci-fi. I, I still can't believe this is actual research happening in real life. There's still a bunch of other movies that showcase brain-computer interfaces that are worth a mention. One of the most absurd and maybe grossest is the 1999 film Existence, where the BCI has this weird fleshy form factor. Then there's Avatar from 2009, which is the only movie I'm aware of that uses a BCI to link up a human mind with an alien's body. BCIs have even popped up in a few Marvel movies and tons of TV shows like Rick and Morty, which has some really amusing ones, and Altered Carbon on Netflix, which features a cortical stack implant. While I haven't seen the HBO Max series Made for Love, it apparently features a brain implant that connects the minds of a married couple and not to be left out of the streaming platforms. Amazon Prime's The Peripheral has a BCI that lets the main character kind of time travel. Brain-computer interfaces have even made their way onto Broadway. For example, the musical Be More Chill features a BCI that helps the main character become more popular in high school. 
It's kind of amazing how much brain-computer interfaces have permeated pop culture. I mean, just think about all the movies and TV shows I've mentioned here alone, and there's still even more out there. I think it's fair to say the idea of brain-computer interfaces has implanted itself in our collective consciousness. And it's no surprise, really, the idea taps into some of our most fundamental human desires, like enhancing our intelligence, improving our connection and communication, and restoring or upgrading our bodies. But movies and TV shows also reveal our deepest fears about how this technology could go wrong. Dystopian sci-fi especially, which is like most of the genre, really makes you think about some of the ethical issues surrounding brain-computer interfaces. Like, what if this technology is misused or abused? What do brain-computer interfaces mean for our identity, personal autonomy, and privacy? If BCIs are widely adopted in the future, how do we ensure equal access for everyone? And for those who oppose this technology for religious or personal reasons, are they just then at a disadvantage? As brain-computer interface technology progresses, these are all very important questions that movies and TV shows, more than science really, invite us to think about, all while massively entertaining us at the same time. I wanna know, what's your favorite movie about a brain-computer interface? One that I've mentioned or one that I missed? Comment below.